of like boss lady, yas queen. Yes, slay, <laughs> slay queen. Uh, yeah. But don't you know that um, you know the aliens movies? They're all political, and it's all about like um, you know dealing with. Um, the the this, the issues that are unchecked today, the inequalities of today. It's all the memes where everyone's like, "No, the, the crew expendable scene and the Wayland Jutani's bad and blah blah blah," and then it just had a guy going, "Ha ha, smart gun go brr." <laughs> <laughs> Say, yeah, it's against capitalism, and it's like, uh, yeah, evil corporation. Like that's like saying because they made a guy bad, like a bad man, they're trying to say men bad. Yeah, the usual, like I'm going to project like my obsessions onto this franchise that's got nothing to do with any of this stuff because I just I need it. Like that's that's what gives my yeah. life meaning. It's, um, it's, they, they inject, they have to inject their politics and it fucking everything, man. Like yeah, you know? I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. And also angry. Let's talk about that poorly thought out conversation. Jesus Christ, you don't know the rules? So first, the essential caveat. I like the critical drinker. I like Count Ankula. I've met him a few times. He's a good guy. Now, usually when I'm watching one of the Critical Drinkers videos, my head is happily nodding away the way Tatiana's does on payday. And I really don't like that it seems that every time I mention the Critical Drinker, I'm just complaining and pointing out flaws. I, I really want to balance that out. His Why Modern Movies Suck series is really great. I really enjoy it. And maybe it's because I like his channel so much that these flaws, these blind spots that he has, really annoy me. But it's not just the critical drinker who makes this mistake, who says this very daft point about, we need to get the politics out of modern movies and get it back to the way it was. Politics free. I just want to keep the politics out, guys. Many people make this mistake. So let's discuss it. Now, I think you already know that I share the critical drinker and Count Ankula's disdain for the message and wariness whenever a new adaptation is announced, knowing it's going to get the treatment. Like, it's sad, but it's like, there's no reason to get excited for fucking anything anymore because we've been shit on that much. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, and it's particularly hard when it's something that you used to enjoy. You know, they've taken it over and they're just going to, like, inject whatever they want to inject into it. Um, yeah. If anyone is going to know about inappropriately injecting harmful things, it's going to be two Scotsmen. I'm going to trust them on this. However, their idea of a message-free, politics-free film is a fantasy, and it's a fantasy that I want to address here. Because just as the idea of a neutral state institution is a myth and a very helpful myth, the idea of a politics and value-free story is a nonsense. I'm not going to repeat the video I did that is dedicated to this idea. You can just watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. But to sum it up quickly, you just cannot have a story without values and consequently politics. You're not going to be able to have a intended emotional response without values. You cannot have a nadir or a triumph if the hero failing is just as valuable as a hero winning. In fact, how would you even know who the hero is? So it really grinds my gears to be told that I am obsessed when I can see a coherent message and value system in a story from which I can then derive political intentions. Telling me not to look at that, not to notice it, not to think about it, or indeed criticise it, really isn't far off people telling Mauler that he is obsessed when he notices incoherence in character or plot. Although, I obviously get that a lot of people are a lot more interested in the story, in the characters, than they are in any political readings. And that is absolutely fine because the plot and the story are a lot more important to the film. Something having a really coherent, well done message is really just a bonus. It's a cherry on the cake, it's a seasoning on a meal. That's the way I've always thought of it. So to be absolutely crystal clear, I do not mind if people don't care about the political readings of a film, 
That's completely cool, it is a niche interest. But unfortunately, the drinker and Dankula go one step further in this discussion, and they say that the politics are not there. There are no politics in Alien or Aliens. And that is a stupid and naive thing to say. You're saying, yeah, see how this like one scene where it says crew expendable? Yeah, that means socialist utopia. How? Yeah. How, oh, mate? Man. Come on now. It's like, it's like, yeah, okay, let, let's look at those two seconds and completely ignore the rest of the fucking movie then, will we? Now, obviously, Dank is right that the crew expendable message is shown only for a few seconds, but that doesn't mean it's inconsequential. The crew expendable message, the instruction, is part of a really consistent pattern of unethical behaviour from the Wayland yutani Corporation. It consistently shows them, over the course of the Alien series, having far more regard for their profit than for human life, and then behaving almost like a state power. That is how big the Wayland yutani Corporation has grown, and you see the terrible consequences of this. It's a consistent message. However, just because Dank is incorrect here, it does not mean that the people giving a socialist interpretation of Alien are correct. They would first have to provide a coherent evidence reading. I have yet to see one. However, it is pretty obvious to say that just because one specific political interpretation of a film is illogical, is unsupported, that you cannot find a coherent reading elsewhere. Heck, one of my tiny channel's most viewed videos is of me arguing against a trendy, incoherent, post hoc rationalisation of The Matrix as a trans allegory. I, I hope that suffices to show that I am not blindly in favour of reading anything political into a movie just for the sake of it, nor am I looking desperately just to see my own politics represented. That is not the case. So in contrast to The Drinker and Dank's claims, what are the politics of Alien and Aliens? Well, Alien has very clear, consistent, second-wave feminist themes. N no, really. Now, I've gone into those in detail in other videos, in here, or in a stream we did about Alien, so I'm not going to repeat myself here, I want this brief, but those themes are there. Now, Aliens carries on that feminist theme, but updates it for the mid-80s when it was made, and James Cameron also adds in his regular, patriotic, lightly populist, and also cynical of corporations vibe. Once again, the Wayland yutani Corporation is shown to value profit over human life. You've got the idea of the corporation so big that it's functioning like a state power here. They apparently have their own military force that they can deploy. And the massacre of these marines is a very clear Vietnam parallel. The idea being basically that the corporation is going to be very wasteful of human life if it threatens their profit motive. He's trying to connect the tragedy of the Marines' death to the tragedy of Vietnam, trying to make you get that emotional connection to something you already know. It's a classic technique. Essentially, what we're seeing in Aliens is the classic, mainstream, Western, 80s liberal worldview. We're seeing that women are more than breeders, that they can work, they can do basically anything they want without losing their femininity. If they do, that's kind of fine too. Capitalism is also fine, but corporate greed is a risk, and we have to make sure that human life is considered first. Those are the messages and politics of aliens, and they are demonstrated by a consistent pattern throughout the film. Now, in the case of Alien 3, which was the subject of Dankula and Drinker's stream, yeah, um, I, I am a lot more sympathetic to the idea that there is no political interpretation of that film. It is pretty incoherent. I mean, there is still continued cynicism towards corporate power, with Wayland yutani once again being present. But um, beyond that, I do not see a coherent political reading. And that is because Alien 3 is the result of a very chaotic and jumbled production process. You had multiple stages and levels of writers overwriting each other's works, taking bits and pieces. And in addition, you had a constant stream of interference and meddling from studio execs who were coming in and overriding the debut directorial effort of David Fincher. I really don't think I've seen Hollywood executives interfere with new talent this much since... So when I'm watching the stream and I'm asking myself, how can anyone miss this? I think the thing is, 
The critical drinker and Dankula aren't seeing the content of these films, the messages, as political because it is their worldview, it's the politics that they share, it just looks neutral to them. What a blue-haired HR minion is going to see as toxic masculine uh, harassment in the workplace really just looks like regular banter and conversation to Dank and the drinker. And that's absolutely fine. It's normal to them and actually, yeah, it's normal in the world. But that doesn't mean it's not a thing. The fact that you can have this good-natured, lightly spicy banter should be considered normal for the time, and it very much was considered normal in the 80s when this film was made. But just because it's normal doesn't mean that you should turn your brain off and not try and think about what you've seen here. In short, we need a name for air, even though it's what we're all breathing. We are speaking English, even if we only think of it as speaking. There are many other options, and our option does have a name. To reiterate, I like the critical drinker, but his blind spots really do harm his understanding of film. For instance, he has demonstrated a blind spot around faith because his modern, very mainstream, secular, atheistic standpoint has resulted in him twice highlighting very biased, almost one-sided critiques of faith as Balanced discussions. The real red flag for me, the one that got me making this video, was his praise of 12 Angry Men, which I want to be clear, I really enjoy. It's a beautifully made film. However, with no irony whatsoever, the drinker praises the film's critical thinking and analysis, whilst applying absolutely no critical thinking or scepticism towards the film's arguments. It's a common problem. I have a 25 minute long, much downvoted video which shows how Jorah 8 and the filmmakers manipulate and deceive the audience into supporting a not guilty verdict using terrible arguments, using cheating, using psychological pressure. The critical drinker fell for it. No critical thinking applied. When the drinker says Jura 8 first says He objects on the pretext that a man's life's at stake and the least they can do is give the guy a proper hearing first. All he really asks for is for each man to lay out his opinion and explain his decision. He doesn't critically consider whether Jura 8 and, more importantly, the filmmakers are being honest. He just says that Jura 8 is a curious, sceptical guy. He's got no agenda. And not noticing, or certainly not commenting, that Jura 8 only ever argues in one direction, making terrible arguments, changing those arguments when he needs to, applying psychological pressure to people he can't convince, making these false comparisons. You know, there is no consideration that maybe Jura 8 said this thing at the start just to appear reasonable, just to buy a little time, and then moving on to slowly dismantling arguments, changing what he needs to say to secure the result that he is actually very dedicated to achieving. I know I'm going to get downvotes for this. It always happens. Total sacred cow. In my view, because 12 Angry Men shares the drinker's individualist, liberal, anti-bigotry, colourblind stance, he doesn't interrogate the message, he doesn't see the agenda, he doesn't apply critical thinking to what he's seeing in the film. And I get it, the film is very persuasive, it's incredibly well made. It is beautiful, it is effective, it is convincing, and it is gripping. But it is absolutely cheating and manipulating you to make you support the conclusion. For a final example of blind spots, let's look at the drinker's much appreciated How to Succeed at YouTube video. In this video, he advises people to keep politics out of their videos. But recently, Nearly every video of his has succinctly called out films pushing The Message. The Message is political, no doubt. But so is rejecting the message, and it's naive and blinkered to miss that. Wanting historically accurate but otherwise colourblind casting is a fine position, but it's not a neutral one. The Message is not being rejected randomly. It is being rejected because the message is a collectivist, identitarian, intersectional worldview, and that doesn't work with an individualist, liberal worldview. 
those are the grounds for rejecting it, not just some neutral ground. The neutral ground has a name. I don't, there are certain movies where I alright you could draw like we have been drawing like some meta meanings from Alien, but then you look at you're, you're looking at Alien, and whenever I watch it, like I'm sort of like I want to see aliens getting absolutely ripped to shreds by a, by an M1 pulse rifle. Count Dankula and the Critical Drinker make the very common mistake of seeing the sledgehammer subtlety of current productions where you just can't miss the foghorn politics that are preached directly with no metaphors or symbolism and are reinforced by mainstream media pieces that really spell out the message in those films even more. Older films rarely did this, they, they were so much better in that the politics were very much secondary to the plot and you can completely miss them because they were subtle and required interpretation. Invasion of the Body Snatchers still works as an amazing sci-fi horror, even if you don't know about McCarthy-chan. However, a subtle message that you miss is still there. To make this video spicier, let's talk about current Doctor Who. The Drinker and Dankula discuss Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, don't think they're a fan, and no doubt they can easily see that the newly cast Chuti Gatwa is, once again, the message at work in Doctor Who. Now, I'm not quoting either of them directly here, but I do think they represent a very common mindset, which was, I'm totally cool with Russell T Davies' early Who, with Mickey, with Martha, but this, this new one, that's the message at work. That's the sort of vibe I got from the drinker's friend Az, who led me on to this really interesting interview with Davies and Gatwa. Let's look at it. We've all got a lot bolder with the messages and the conversations that we're opening up using TV, via TV. I feel like we've got bolder. Notice that Davies is nodding along at being able to be bolder with the message, implicitly saying he wanted to be bolder, but couldn't be. In Davies' very interesting early works, The Second Coming and Queer as Folk, he's able to get away with a lot more, to go a lot further, and he did. So you can very easily say that seasons one to four of The New Who was really just boiling the frog and getting you ready for... Um, but yeah, just seeing the diversity on screen has been and in their conversation we get this really amazing example of the achronological blind spot the recency bias that is really skewing their perspective and it's when dankula says this the 80s were a really rough time to try and make movies because there was a lot of puritans in hollywood they wanted like if there was going to be violence it had to at least be cinematic and artful and all that stuff whereas I do not want to sound harsh, but it is embarrassing to have a frame of reference that small. If you want to talk about actual censorship restrictions, look at when there were defined rules literally banning a whole host of themes or images. I, I, I'm, I'm really just struggling with someone calling the film system of the 80s that released Robocop, The Thing and Society Puritan. That that really is showing how very boiled the frog is. Or moreover, it's showing a complete ignorance of how film censorship has been on a barely diverting trend of liberalization since about 1931. And maybe we could up the Scoville count here. You might also say it's how your grandparents and great grandparents ethics and morals were consistently undermined and then removed via liberalisation, tolerance, modernising, so that a new set of values could be imposed. The message. Maybe when your parents and grandparents were a bit funny about 90s TV, you know, a bit stuck in the mud, a bit fuddy-duddy, maybe they were just seeing the entertainment frog being boiled, seeing an earlier version of The Message, where we couldn't. But if you uncritically have the early 2000s liberal, individualist, edgy boy mindset, maybe you don't see the message because you agree with it. And you really only notice the message when the temperature gets turned up. To end on a really depressing note, there are a heck of a lot of young adults who've had six or more years of the message in its current form. And 
now that's just their normal. They don't see any politics. That is just regular old entertainment. And you, you're kind of a bigoted reactionary for pointing it out. I don't know what you're, you're just reading politics when there aren't any, my dude. What, what can I tell you? You get used to it. I, I don't even see the, the message. All I see is stunning, brave, ooh woo. These young adults have marinated in the message so long that they don't even notice it and they instinctively agree with most of it. To paraphrase Gramsci and Deutschke, I kind of call this the long march through the intuitions. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Go away now.